Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Always Sometimes Monsters. This is KPX Valkyrie and thank you for joining for me for this Let's Play. Um, so, it is the night of our second day and we have to find something else to do to make some money and keep us busy. So, let's see what's going on here in the town at night. This place is supposed to open up soon. I'm pretty pumped. They're supposed to have some really wicked prizes for the games. Good to know. Oh, you know, just hanging out. Every night a full moon rises and I just sit here. Really? Every night there's a full moon? I've never heard that one before. Are you having a nice day? Uh, yeah, sure. Still no one at the pub. That's gotta be hard for him. Let's see if our uh, Vagabond Dog guy is here. Gone back to the office. No, it doesn't seem so. This is a pretty nice office, don't you think? A good workspace is key to fostering creativity, I always say. I work out of a shitty one-room apartment, so I don't really know. Well, we've all gotta start somewhere. Let's get your opinion on this. Don't you think, do you think it's worth investing in this company? They seem to have some good ideas, but they're a little rough. Um, sure, why not? I don't think so. Invest in me? Not my business. Um, hmm, invest in me is very tempting because we do need the money, but sure, why not? Good ideas should be rewarded regardless of how polished they are, right? I suppose so. Thanks for your input. I appreciate the perspective. Maybe I'll make these guys an offer if they ever show up. Oh cool, I can um, ask him one of the other things. So let's see what he says when I tell him to invest in me. Forget about them man, invest in me, trust me, it's a decision you'll never regret. Oh, are you a video game developer? I'm always looking for new talent. Nope, I'm a writer. Books? No thanks. Don't you know print's dead? Not yet, but maybe. I mean, they still have ebooks, so it doesn't have to be print. Um, let's see if we can talk to the vagabond dog guys and get some, uh, like, see if they'll get them to return to their office. Yeah, that's it. And you're still here with your dog? Thank you so much for finding my ladybird. We are looking forward to all you can eat dirty mackerel and cheese night. I bet you are. Okay. Dude, what the hell did you do to the logic over here? Seriously, this makes about as much sense as putting mayonnaise on french fries. I'm a writer, not a programmer. Besides, some people like mayonnaise on their french fries. Doesn't mean I understand it, dude. Don't worry, I'll clean it up. How much self-referential humor is too much? I don't think people will even get half of these jokes. I don't worry about it, man. We've got to make ourselves laugh first. Oh boy, I'm laughing all right. I better not disturb him anymore. Do you think they'll ever kick us out of here? I mean, we never leave. No way, we're their best customers. Hell, we're probably a tourist attraction by now. Why would people flock to see guy two guys working in a coffee shop? That makes no sense at all. You know what? Never mind. I better leave him be. So, that answers that. There's no follow-up between... Uh, those two dudes and the guy wanting to throw money at them, so. Alright, um, last time there was a guard standing around here and we didn't get to come in here, so let's check out the employment center. Hmm, looks like this place will hire just about anyone, too bad they're closed for a civic holiday. What the hell is Temp Workers Day anyway? Oh, well then never mind. Um, Impossible Futures Child Development Center. Closed today for field trip. Right. And here's the bus station. I'm sure we probably can't afford a bus ticket yet. Um, and we've got the hospital. Oh, this, this is the high rung ad agency. And um, the apartments where we already were. So I don't really understand why the movie theater can't just build like here on this empty lot 
It's huge. It's even bigger than the apartment building, and it's right next door to their existing lot. So they could just absorb that all into one and build to their heart's content, and that would be awesome, but no. Um, alright, well, we, um, need a place to stay, and sleeping under the stars is really not the best idea, so let's see, uh, if Haley's key actually works and what we can... Oh, cool. <laughs> we found an indie Heroes figure. Okay. No business here. Let's see if we can stay here for the night. There's some strange music coming from inside the room. I wonder if I should check it out. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um. So, are you just going to stand there gawking, or are you going to join in already? Sure. Um. <coughs> yeah. I'll, I'll just do that here. Let me take off my clothes and and jump in. I think there's room if you climb, like, go under me and then put your leg. It's not a very big bed, is it? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh man, that's terrible. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. Awkward, huh? Yeah, you can say that again. I knew I gave my spare key to somebody, completely blanked out from that whole night. Those pills were amazing, by the way. I've still got a few if you're around tonight. I'd ask for my key back now, but there's no way of knowing for sure whether you've made a ton of copies. You gave out our spare key? Damn it, Haley! Well, I guess you're living with us now. No sense even having doors. You know, I thought this whole open concept thing was going to be fun, but it's really not. I like that we've got random girls coming over in the middle of the night, but warning would be nice. Did you already see my dick? I bet you already saw my dick. Don't worry about that. This is Jem. She's, one, she's the one who scored me that stuff from Dawn. I invited her over to meet us, but I forgot. I'm sorry, Bradley's still not used to this. We're a very open couple. He's adjusting. Personally, I don't think there's anything wrong giving a key to someone you're expecting to be intimate with. And by intimate, you mean... Well, I was hoping you'd be interested in helping Bradley and I explore trifecta energies. Are you talking about a threesome? Yeah, sorry, let me explain. Brad and I really don't believe in monogamy. It's an unfair shackling of our human nature. With a more open perspective on sexuality, we both find life to be more fulfilling without all of the distractions it usually brings. Yeah, it's a fucking riot. Most of the time, it just means finding some dude banging her when I walk in the door like you did just right there. Every once in a while, though, it's some cute number like you and her. Makes it all worthwhile. I'm sure it does. You don't mind about Brad, do you? I'm sorry, I didn't mention him earlier. Uh, no problem with me. <laughs> well, I don't want to rush you into anything. We'll both be out tonight, so the place is yours. You've got to run out. We've got to run out to the store for some more body oil. You need us to get you any? I'm good, thanks. Make yourself at home. You can sleep on the couch if you like. I'd avoid the bed. It's still a little, um, messy. Uh, thanks, I guess. Alright, cool. So, we've got this apartment all to ourselves. It looks like they even have a video camera here, but I can't talk to it to find out. So, that's really interesting. Um, we could even take this money here. There's gotta be at least $20, but we're not thieves. They're being nice to us to let us stay in their apartment, so best not take what's not mine. Guess I could crash on this couch. Better than sleeping outdoors. Mm, should I write another page in my journal? Might as well. Gotta get it down while it's still fresh in my mind. Yay! We completed a journal page. And the next morning. So hungry. I should really find something to eat. Looks like Patrick's paging me. Beep, beep, beep. Message from Pat Patrick. Come to office ASAP. Breaking story. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point one. <laughs> I guess he liked my story on the Sunny Megaplex. I've got more work with the Daily News Times. That is awesome. 
Alright, so it's day three here in Dubstown. Let's go see what this new day has in store for us. <sighs> Alright, I guess we'll uh, go ahead and check out that job with the newspaper first and see what's going on here. Hmm. Okay. Hello again, Patrick. Great work on that story yesterday. As promised, I've got your pay ready. 100 bucks, just like I said. I hope you don't mind getting paid in cash. It helps keep the man from getting his unfair cut, if you know what I mean. You beeped me about something urgent. Another story. We need someone right away. We received an anonymous tip about a disgruntled worker who was recently fired from the high run at rung ad agency. He is a notable luminary in the ad world. An interview with him would make an excellent human interest story. We need you to go talk to him to get the facts. We need total coverage. So you want me to go and spend a day with a disgruntled office worker? I'm interested, but that doesn't sound particularly safe for me. No need to worry about that. The tip did say something about a box of ammo at his desk, but there's been no word on a gun. Besides, that's what the danger pay is for. Get this done and I'll pay you double for this. We'll even run it on the front page tomorrow. $200, hmm? You're lucky I need the money. So where does this guy live? He is at the Regal apartment complex just across the street in apartment 203. Head back there when you're done and use any of the workstations to type it out. Alright, wish me luck. <laughs> yeah, um, dude's disgruntled and he's got ammo. And where there's ammo, there's usually a gun. So let's see how this goes. I don't think anyone is home. Ah, here we go. Jack. Oh, hello there. You must be the reporter from the Daily News Times. Welcome. Please come in. Yeah, I am. How did you know about that? Well, I was the one who left the tip. I have a few things I need to make public. First, though, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. I don't think that's how interviews usually work, but sure. Have you ever worked to the bone only to find nobody appreciated it? Does a legacy of effort mean anything in this world anymore? Of course, but not all appreciate it. Or nothing lasts forever. Um, let's go with the positive, glasses half full response here. Of course, truly great work lasts forever, even if it's not appreciated in its time. Hmm, interesting. I guess even Picasso was called crazy back in his day. Do you ever feel like people control you? If the best way to keep someone totally complacent is with a kind word and a smile, then how can you ever trust anyone? It's dangerous trusting people. You need trust to survive. It's a scary thing trusting someone else, but without trust, how can we function? You need to have faith in people from time to time to, to get by. I guess that's true. If we never trusted people's authenticity, it would be very hard to function in a society. If someone wrongs you, can you ever truly look the other way? Can a person learn to accept that sometimes you'll wind up being the prey? Hmm. You can't let people screw you, or you can't be on top forever. Let's go with you can't let people screw you. If it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, then you can't let yourself be a victim. You need to take charge and show them who's boss by whatever means you can. Mm, that's a harsh truth. I suppose some people are just victims and others are just predators. It's the way the world works, I guess. Why are some people willing to destroy the lives of others just to get ahead what little they can? What drives someone to sabotage others for success? Only insecure people do that. Only smart people do that. Um. Only insecure people do that. In my experience, it's the insecure folks who can't prove their own worth on their own that need to climb on other people's backs to find what they want. Oh, that's interesting. I've never considered it a sign of personal weakness before. When you see wrongs in the world, are you compelled to speak up? Why do some choose to stay quiet in the face of awfulness while others don't? 
Only cowards need defense or self-preservation is important. Self-preservation is important. If we all went and put ourselves on the line for every little thing we should have, if we all went and put ourselves on the line for every little thing we should have, then we'd always be in danger ourselves. Yes, I suppose, trying to do the right for someone who has their back against the wall can leave you in the firing squad sights too. Have you ever made an assumption that you wish you hadn't made before? What can we do when our gut feelings are telling us someone has a devious thought? Uh, circumstances are often too misunderstood or your gut's usually right. Those gut feelings we have about people are usually based on something. I mean, what else do we have to go on if we have to evaluate every situation as it comes? Ignoring our gut feelings means ignoring a lifetime of experience. We can't be faulted for those judgments. Well, you've given me a lot to think about. I apologize if this was more than a little bit unconventional. I hope you got what you needed from your article. I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. There's something I need to get done. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions, though. I'm not sure I'll be, be able to write a story out of all that. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions about why I'm here? Of course, please, ask anything you wish. Well, tell me about High Rung Ad Agency. What kind of business is it? Well, High Rung is an advertising agency. We've established that. Their business is getting people to buy things they probably don't need. I worked there as the mouth of the organization. My words persuaded others to feel worse about their lives, so they would buy what we were selling. You can only speak lies so long before your life becomes one. Um, well, do you mind me asking what all those questions were about? That was some pretty heavy stuff. Suffice it to say that I've been seeking an answer I don't think I can find on my own. Questions of this nature often need different perspectives to solve. Well, who are you exactly? I know a little about you, but who are you exactly? I'm nobody. Nobody special. Come on, there's got to be something you can say for yourself. Well, you know the boring bits of my biography by now, I'll assume. I guess the only thing I could add is that I see myself as someone who saw the world's awfulness and rejected it to a fault. Well, I guess that's everything. You know, if you have anything to add or have anything more to say, you can reach me at the paper's office. Thank you, Jim. I truly appreciate your time. Goodbye. Looks like Jack locked the door. He probably just needs some time alone. I hope that's not going to end badly for him. Um, the paper thing was a little dis disconcerting. You know, I don't know if I got them right or wrong, the way he took some off the wall and then left some up. That's really weird. Uh, hey Jim. <laughs> Shit, I haven't seen you in almost a year. How are things going? It's me, Dave. From Larry's party? You and Rio still knocking boots? <laughs> no, we, uh, broke up. Huh, that's too bad. That book or whatever still coming along? You didn't release it yet, did you? Please, tell me you have like a million bucks. I could totally borrow some right now. Yeah, I never finished it. What about you? What are you doing these days? I just picked up some bullshit work doing some copywriting for a soda company or something. It was really dull work until all this office drama started rearing its ugly head. Some people just can't get along, can they? Anyway, I'm sure you've got stuff to do. I won't keep you any longer. It was really nice catching up with you. Likewise. Alright, well, yeah, seems like maybe we can go to um, the ad agency and get some more information on this, since he did say it was office drama, so let's go ahead and make a trip over there. Um, another thing, that question about, you know, following your gut instinct and so on, um, I have a friend who is very, very good at that, like she can make snap decisions about someone's character and she's right about 97% of the time. It is amazing so always follow your gut especially if you have um, a bad feeling about someone that you've just met. Hey you must be the kid Larry called us about. Sorry to tell you but we needed someone ASAP and the job's already been filled. 
I guess I have to find another job then. Thanks for your time. Oh, I didn't see you there. If you need something, Bailey will be able to help you. He's the fellow with the big mustache over by the photocopier. Great. Hmm. She looks kind of familiar, and in a way, so does he. <laughs> Alright, anyway, getting back to the um, task at hand here. Don't take this personally, but you're kind of cramping my space, and I've got a lot of work to do. Go talk to Bailey over by the copier if you need something. I want some more information on the office drama if possible. Jim, I had to let him go. I can't have that kind of ridiculous insubordination on my hands right now. Sorry, we're not taking walk-ins today. If you need something, Bailey should be able to help you. I don't know, Jim. What would you do? Honestly, you should have heard this lunatic. Alright, and I guess he's gonna just repeat himself. So, time to go find someone else to talk to here. I'm saying we can't let the client hear about this or they're going to go with the idiots at Conch and Wolfram. Sorry, business talk, pal. Real private. If you need something, go talk to Bailey and he'll sort you out. Anyway, you catch the game last night? So I told that psycho to shove it right up his ass. Man, what a freak. Sorry, I'm in the middle of something. If you need anything, I suggest you go talk to Bailey. He's the guy with the goofy walrus mustache. Anyway, are we doing brews tonight? Alright, and apparently they're just going to repeat themselves as well. And I don't think Bailey has anything else to say to us, though I guess we are done here. Hey, you must be the kid Larry called us about. Sorry, but we needed someone. The position's been filled. Thanks for your time. Alright, <laughs> cool. So that takes care of that then. No shortcuts around there. And I suppose it's time to get this story filed so that we can get on to our ne next ta task at hand. <sighs> I can speak. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Back to our kitty workstation because why not? Well, I guess I better get this interview filed if it's going to be printed in the morning. Where to start? Hello? Jem, it's Jack. I wanted to thank you for stopping by today. You really did give me a lot to think about. I've been on the verge of making a very important decision about my life, and I want to say that you've helped me come to a conclusion. I'm happy knowing that someone else out there understands me. Please know that I truly appreciate the new perspective you gave me. I'm going to be leaving Dubstown within the next few days. I wanted to extend the invitation to you. I know you've been looking to leave as well. You don't need to answer now, but I want you to know that you don't need to go it alone. You found a friend in me and I'm happy to help. At least, it's the least I can do considering what you've done for me. Thank you, Jem. Well, uh, thanks, Jack. It was nice talking to you. Likewise. You know where to find me. Looks like I've got a ride out of this town. San Verdano, here I come. Alright, and that brings us to the afternoon of day three. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut things there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you next time for part six.